In this video, I'm going to show you how to design and build a passive crossover. Let's get started. Passive crossover networks can be found in home speakers and in car audio component speakers. You're also going to find a passive crossover network on higher quality coaxial drivers for a car audio environment. Crossover networks can be as simple or as complicated as we want to make them. If you want a more advanced video on how passive crossover networks work, let me know about it in the comments and I'll put together a video answering any question that you have. At the most basic level, a passive crossover network is simply a composition of one of two types of components. The first one is a capacitor or a cap. The second component is an inductor or a coil. You use a capacitor to keep the bass and the mid-range out of your tweeters. Only high frequencies will pass through a capacitor, so you call this a high-pass filter. Because there's only one component in the crossover network, you would call this a first-order high-pass filter. Now, if you want to keep high frequencies out of your mid-range or your woofer, you're going to use a coil. You wire a coil in series with your mid-range, and that will filter out the high frequencies, only letting low frequencies pass, so a single coil wired in series with your mid-range driver or your woofer is going to be a low-pass crossover filter. And because it's one component, it's a first-order filter. Let's just jump right into the build. I had some scrap pieces of acrylic laying around that I cut down to 3 inch by 4 inch pieces. And I drilled a few holes to pass the wires through so I can use this as a board to mount my crossover. And then I made some little standoffs with some scrap acrylic. And I'm using super glue and accelerator to affix the standoffs to the circuit boards. If you've never used Accelerator before, you really ought to give it a try. It really is a game changer when you're gluing things together. You just dab a little super glue on the surface, squirt one of the pieces with Accelerator, and hook them together, and it seems to bond almost instantly. In order to hook everything up, I'm going to be using a nine conductor wire. This is nine wires bundled all together, and I'm just going to cut it and take it apart to get access to the wires. The wires are color coded to be consistent with the standard wiring configuration for a car audio receiver, which is handy because I'm going to be powering this system that I'm building with a Bluetooth car audio receiver, and everything will be color coded. My game plan is to wire the tweeters to the front channels and the mid-ranges to the rear channels so that I can then adjust the treble versus mid-range by simply adjusting the fader. This is the layout for my high-pass filter. In this case, I want a steeper roll-off, so I'm going to be combining a cap and a coil for my high-pass filter. And I've drawn some arrows on the screen to kind of show you how the current kind of flows through this crossover network. We start off by hooking the positive up to a resistor that I've added in order to quieten down the tweeter a little bit. And that resistor is then wired in series with the capacitor. And then the capacitor is tied to the inductor, to the coil. And then from there, the positive goes out to the tweeter. Now coming back from the tweeter, we have a negative line which ties into the other side of the coil and then off back to the amplifier to complete the circuit. So I've already taken my crossover components and I've fastened them to the board with some hot glue and I've started soldering everything together. My soldering skills aren't the best in the world, but I'm slowly getting better at it. And that's one thing to remember. You don't have to be perfect and the world's greatest solder expert in order to do this. The idea is that you practice and you get better. One tip that you should always remember is to make sure that your iron is as hot as can possibly be before you get started. I have a tendency to get impatient and uh, start working too quickly and end up with a cold joint. So do as I say, not as I do. So here are some shots of the assembled crossovers sitting inside of the enclosure looking good, all ready to go. And then I ran into a problem. The mid-range drivers that I'm using for this project have some huge magnets hanging off the back of them and the magnets bumped into my low-pass filters. So I had to rip out the low-pass filters and rebuild them which happens sometimes, I suppose. The key thing here to remember is that everyone makes mistakes and you can't let your mistakes get you down. They're just a minor setback. If you view mistakes as an indication of your net worth as a person, you're, you're never going to feel good about yourself. You just got to rebuild these things and go on. 
So looking at the bright side of life and the silver lining in the cloud, I missed my opportunity to film the assembly of the low pass filter early on. And now that I get the honor of rebuilding them, I can show you how they went together. Now it's time to lay out the low pass filter. We start off by taking the positive lead from the amplifier and tying it into the coil. And then we're gonna connect the coil and the capacitor together. We're gonna to grab that point, hook another positive line up and run that positive over to the driver itself. In this case, it's a small mid-range driver. In order to complete the circuit, we run the negative line from the driver back to the other side of the capacitor, tie in there, and then continue that line back to the negative side of the amplifier in order to complete the circuit. Now that I have the crossover laid out, it's just a matter of soldering all the joints together and then using some hot glue to affix the cap to the coil. Then I'll hot glue the entire assembly into the enclosure before I start wiring up the speakers. In case you didn't know, I'm building this crossover as a part of my Bluetooth boombox. I've got a playlist on the Bluetooth boombox. I'll give you a link to the entire playlist right here. Check it out. It's been a lot of fun to build this thing. So this is the primary power wire for the car stereo that's going to power this entire project. The wire is yellow. That's a standard color for primary power for a car radio. It's got an inline fuse with this nice inline fuse holder that just snaps together. This is where the 12 volt DC is going to be running into the radio in order to power it. And let's take a look at the rest of the harness. There's two more wires here that I want to point out to you at this point in the build. That is the black and the red. So the black is going to be the ground. So there we have it right there on the screen, the power and the ground together. And then the red is the memory. So this is what's used to maintain the internal memory of the stereo when it's not powered on. So it's always going to have a constant 12 volts applied to it. So let's go ahead and prep this harness. I'm going to start off by stripping all the wires just a little bit more. Uh, they came stripped from the factory, but it wasn't enough material to really do a good job of soldering on extensions. I'm going to take the yellow and the red, and I'm going to solder those together to another red wire that's just going to give me some extra length so I can run this wire to where I connect. I'm going to do the same thing with the black wire. So the idea is to just extend these wires a little bit so I can hook up to 12 volt power. Then I'm going to take all of the other wires, which are the speaker wires, and I'm going to hook these up to their corresponding crossovers. I said before, I'll say it again, I'm going to be hooking up the tweeters to the front channels and the mid ranges to the rear channels. That's going to give me the opportunity to use the fader as a type of tone control and give me just a little bit more control over the sound of this uh, project. I'm going to be posting another video that shows how to hook up a car stereo inside of the home that's also a part of the playlist for this build log. Make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe so that when I upload that you don't miss it. Now that I have the crossover and the harness all wired up and ready to go, it's just a matter of connecting the speakers and then plugging in the harness to the back of the stereo. The tweeters are press fit into the front of the baffle and I've got some speaker gasket tape to ensure that I've got a good, nice, snug, airtight fit. I'm going to pre-drill some holes. It's always smart to pre-drill some holes. And then after I pre-drill those holes, I'm just going to simply drive a screw in and hold down the, the mid-range drivers. Then after that, it's just a matter of plugging in the stereo. So I just plug the harness into the back of the radio and then slide the harness into the cage. It gives a nice click to let me know that it's in nice and solid. Now I am done with this project. It's just a matter of affixing the back and hooking it up to power and it's ready to play music. Which is what we're going to do in the next video. So go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell so you'll know when I upload it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.